Uh, it's Ebro in the morning. Um, Laura Styles Rosenberg, you know, it's the first week back to 217, 2017. Everybody's schedules are crazy, but I had an opportunity to grab somebody from the legendary Buena Vista Social Club, Juan DeMarcos. Yeah. How are you. you, sir? I'm I'm cool. Thank you very much for giving me a chance to be with you here. Nice. You are very well known in my country. Really? In Cuba? Really well known, yeah. Look, hey, Cuba. Well, within, within the environment, you yeah. know. Within the I music mean, world. I mean, they're hip-hop and yeah. reggaeton people. Yeah. They all love you. I, I want to get down there. And, you uh, have to. Yeah, I want to be down there. You I want to. And, and now things are a lot easier for us to travel. It's much more easier. Yeah. I, I want to uh, first, um, what, what brings you to New York City right now? Uh, well, I came just to, to meet Willie. Uh, we are talking about uh, the future, about certain things. I have a couple of meetings in the APAP conference, mm -hmm. and I have to see my manager. Um, just a few things. Just and, business. Uh, to have, yeah, just business and to have a couple of things with my wife. Yeah. We have been married for 38 years. Congratulations, and, uh, yes. We need a chance, a second or third or fourth uh, honeymoon. Ah, very nice. <laughs> I try to make uh, my best. <laughs> yeah. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this, um, wherever you are around the world, the Buena Vista Social Club um, has been active since 1996. 96. It was a recording, yeah. 1996. And, and the, um, the band, 1997. And one of the bands from Cuba uh, that really brought Cuban culture to us through the music here and the world. At a time when voices from Cuba were being silenced. Yeah, for sure. Um, was that, and I'm sure that was the that was the motivation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. In fact, we wanted to make a tribute to the Cuban music, and that's it. My my daddy used to be a very good uh, singer with several Cuban bands of the 30s and 40s, and I had the idea all my life to make a tribute to my daddy because uh, he's my idol. He's mm. still my idol. Yeah. And uh, I had the chance to meet a guy. London, uh, Nick Gold, he wanted to do the same thing. He wanted to make a Cuban jam mm -hmm. album. And then we came to an understanding, and then we went to studio. We brought Ray Cooter, who was uh, the producer of the Buena Vista Social Club. We recorded three albums, and we sold 12 million, yeah. which is not normal for world music, you know. It's not hip hop. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's not Jay Z. But it's beautiful music. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah, beautiful music. Beautiful music, of course. And it covers so many different genres blended together and touches Africa and touches the Caribbean and touches jazz. And yeah. So it connects with so many people in many ways. Yeah, for sure. There's a, there was a marriage uh, between the Cuban uh, music and the Afro Cuban, yes, since the beginning. That's right. I'm talking about New Orleans, the original musicians, about four or five of them. Were of Cuban origins. Mm. Talking about the, the original family. jazz. Yeah, the original jazz. The founding fathers of the jazz. Yeah, the Tio family mm. who teach everyone to play the clarinet in New Orleans. They they are from Cuban ancestors. They right. were from Cuban ancestors. Right, right. So we've been playing American music for years, and then the marriage, the real marriage, happened during the forties. You know Mario Bauza, who is a legend. Mm -hmm. uh, he is a the creator of the Afro-Cuban jazz. Right now it's called Latin jazz, but up to the 90s, there was nothing Latin in the kind of Latin jazz. You know, it why, was, the, why do you think the categorical name changed from Afro-Cuban yeah, jazz to Latin jazz to make it broader, make it more inclusive? Yeah, it, New York is a cosmopolitan city, so mm. there are people from everywhere here. So mm. Latin was a the best name to call this kind of music, but in fact, it was the mix of Afro-Cuban elements in terms of the percussion with the sequence of chords of the original jazz. That's it. That's mm -hmm. uh, Mario Bausa, Machito, and his Afro-Cubans, and DC, uh, Stan Getz, and sure. all of them. So um, today, yes. um, the music from Cuba, we don't get to experience that much here because it doesn't, you know, we don't get to access it. it does, it's not on iTunes. It's not on uh, SoundCloud. You know, the yeah. artists that are making music in Cuba, it's hard right. for them to get their music to oh, us. Yeah. Um, where is that at today in the music scene in Cuba with the distribution of Cuban uh, storytelling, songwriting musicians? Is it more open now? Are people finding a way to get their music out better? 
Well, it's difficult to get the music out if you don't have a if you don't sign with a good company that's going to distribute your music. And right now, the everything changed since the let's say late nineties and uh, no, not late two thousand, two thousand ten, two thousand nine, and even before everything changed. So everything goes through companies that are doing uh, digital distribution That's right. That's right. and so, Wi-Fi and things in the internet is very hard to get oh, in yeah. Cuba. So getting the now music it's better. Up, oh, now Listen, it's better. Now it's better. Now you can get up to five, twelve kilobits uh, per second. Okay. In the past, it, it was a. Uh, almost a nightmare to upload a one megabyte file. And you can get this in your home because I'm told you have to go no, to certain places, yes. No, you have to go to certain places or you have to go to the hotels. Got it. In the hotels, you can get up to 512. But, uh, you know, it's difficult for, for us Cubans to distribute the music, but I know, I'm absolutely sure that we are going to get back to where we were before. Right. As that Lennon said before. Right. Um, so, and on that note, getting back, um, you know, for those that haven't followed the story of Cuba since the turn of the century, 1900, since the turn of the century, and the relationship between uh, African slaves and Europe and the sugar farming and tobacco and just, I mean, Cuba was the second richest country in the Western Hemisphere at a point. Real. Yeah. Perhaps, but we were on the dry foot of the American right. politicians for uh, more than a century. Right. That's why the Cuban Revolution. When that was what the revolution was about, because That's Bautista the and the mob were taking advantage of the country, and Fidel yeah. and his movement was about giving back to the people. Yes, for sure. That was the original. It was a beautiful thing. It changed, unfortunately, with the years, because Fidel got older and older and older, and he was on the power for so many years that... He made some mistakes. Well, he told uh, the he told America to kiss his, he told America to kiss his ass. They weren't happy about that. He sided with the Russians, and then Russia fell apart. And then he didn't have any. There was no financial support or for anyone to do business with. And the economic embargo yes. really shut the country down. Yes. He came here in 1961, 1960, late 1960, in order to come to an understanding with the Americans, and they closed the doors. In mm. his face. So he went to the Russians mm. because he wanted to preserve the revolution. And there were so many people, so many young people dying in, my, in our country. And we were under the foot of the Americans. Um, he tried to make a, a deal with the Americans, but it was impossible. So he went to the Russians. I would do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And you too. Yeah, man. Um, so let me ask you, what is the tone of Cuba today with Fidel's passing? Because you hear mixed stories here. There's... There's Cubans in Miami that are celebrating in the street. Um, and those are what people say are the white Cubans or the rich Cubans that came over because they had money and didn't agree with Fidel and they left. Uh, and, you know, he would call some of those people Bautista supporters and those people get He would kill people that that happened. And, you know, the news we get over here is that he's a murderer. He's a horrible person. And Fidel's the worst. Fidel is a, was a politician, and they said, you can hate him or you can love him. He made a lot, not everything in the Cuban Revolution was bad. He made a lot of good things for the people. He tried to preserve the independence of the country, and then I admired him because of that. But at the same time, he made a lot of, of mistakes, and he was a politician. Mm. Every politician, if you are really against the power, is going to kill you. Mm. Definitely, he killed a lot of people. He uh, took the things of some people that, of course, hate him. Uh, what I don't understand of what happened in Miami is that I, I watched a lot of young guys that were take some advantage of the Cuban Revolution dancing in the streets mm. and having beers, which is forbidden here in America to have a beer in the streets. Mm. And they were having beers in the Calle Ocho. You mm -hmm. know? So you can hate him, you can love him. He was a politician. In the same way that you can love or you can hate Alexander the Great or you can hate uh, Barack Hannibal Obama. or whoever, or Barack, Barack Obama. Obama. Barack Obama, there are a lot, a lot of detractors of the, his policy. Um, but for some people, he was great. Some people loved Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. That's it. They are politicians. And that's it. So he made bad things, he made mistakes, and he made a lot of good things for the Cuban people. Up are, to a point. Right. Are, is is the overall idea in Cuba today one of uh, 
I mean, I'm sure it's optimism, but also uh, is uh, I don't want to say happy that Fidel's gone, but happy that that chapter is closed and things can move on. Or is his brother just going to continue the same things? I don't know what's going to happen in Cuba. Right now, we are afraid that Cuba uh, comes back to be a kind of neo-colony or new colony of the Americans. We don't want to see uh, McDonald's and uh, Starbucks because our coffee is better. <laughs> and our pan con lechon is much better than the, the things that you are selling at your McDonald's. Right. Of course, I respect McDonald's and Starbucks. But good it's deals, not Cuban. Good business, but it's not a Cuban thing. So what I hope is that we are going to preserve the independence. And at the same time, we are going into the future because we have been isolated for so many years. We have to open the economy. The only way to give the people what they deserve is to open the economy. And right now, the economy is opening. I'm afraid that the wealth is going to concentrate in a few hands, mm. same as before. Right. But the people, Cuban people is smart. You know, in the same, in the same way that I, I do admire Fidel Castro, I admire the people in Miami, the old guys that were kicked off Cuba. They went to America really poor, and they became millionaires again. Mm -hmm. So Cuban people... They're resourceful, yeah, smart, tough. Yeah, we're, we're, we're warriors. So I think that we're going to preserve the independence, and at the same time, we're going to insert into the global economy mm. And the people is going to be happy. That's my hope. I don't know. I'm already 60 years old. I don't know what's right. going to happen. Perhaps I, I won't see this happening, but perhaps my grandsons, I, my, my daughter is my son. I don't know. Um, also, you know, I, I think for people who don't know much about Cuba, some of, you know, because of the regime in Cuba and the, the pride of Cubans, was it 95% of the population can read, which is higher than America. Oh, yeah, yeah, higher than the most doc The most doctors, I think, of any country, like per capita yeah. uh, in the Western Hemisphere. Um, and uh, Cuba often would go out and do uh, and support. All the countries. Uh, Fidel would send doctors and help to South Africa when uh, they needed help during apartheid, right? Sure. Or sure. support to Jamaica when Jamaica got their independence and they needed support from Fidel. Does that, does that continue today? Uh, it's continuing right now. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I suppose that they are going to charge a little bit more. The big problem is that because the economy was controlled, completely controlled by the government, then the doctors that are going to those places are not, getting, are not getting the proper payment for their work. Right. And this cannot... Uh, this is not good. And that's the bad part of that's the, the bad part. Of the communism yeah, and the, the government communism. control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People it's not getting paid for their services, people not having control of their lives in a real way. This is a problem, but at the same time, uh it was good in certain side because we didn't have to pay for the doctor. If you go to a pharmacy right here, well, I went to a pharmacy about uh, I don't know, uh, about half a year ago in order to buy Captopril. Uh, for my hypertension, hypertension. Then he, he told me, well, it's uh, $250 for 10 pills. What's that? Yeah. No, we don't have to pay that. Right. I hope that we're going to preserve this uh, advantage in our country. But at the same time, the doctors should be paid. You should be free to open your own business. And uh, without certain limits, uh, you can, uh, I don't know, make it good. Make it better. What about buying and selling homes in Cuba? Like, let's say I'm like, look, I want to come to Cuba. I love that culture down there. You know, as, as someone who's had several friends, I have Cuban friends that talk about it. I mean, it's amazing. It's beautiful. The people, everybody that I've ever met that's Cuban, beautiful, prideful, the music, the culture, the food, just everything Cuba is amazing. I want to go down there and buy a home. Is that something that I can do? No, right now, no. You can't. Right now, no. you can't buy a, a, a house in Cuba yet. I suppose that's going to be easier in the future. Right now, Cubans, Cubans have the right to buy houses. And before it was forbidden. So this is an advantage. Wow. So okay. right now I can go to my country, I can buy a house, whatever I want. I can set up my house or I can rent my house and pay taxes. And this is great. And that's new. That's new. Since, Absolutely. It's yeah. about a couple of years old. Got it. Not more. And you can buy your car. Even in Cuba, you 
you were not able to sell your own car. Uh, the things that you do normally using, uh, what's the name of this uh, internet thing that you can... Uh, eBay. Craig, Craigslist. Tra yeah, Craigslist. Craigslist, yeah, yeah. Uh, eBay or whatever. You, we were unable to do it. Right now we can do it. Okay. This is an advance. And uh, I suppose that in a few years, I would like that we have in Cuba the same policy that the Polish used in the past. Okay. First, Cubans in Cuba. Then, Cubans everywhere in the world. Third, the foreigners. Got it. And this so, is and just That's what we need. Prioritize nationalism and culture and, and a place, a homeland for Cuban people. For sure. Right? And then Cuban nationals, obviously, Cuban and then nationals. everyone else who wants to come be a part of the culture and respect the culture the right way. And respect the people. Um, you have some music coming out. Oh, yeah. Mr. Juan DeMarco. Yeah. Um, what, is this an album? Is this a new album that year? Uh, well, I'm, I'm working right now in my, in, in my uh, small company. I'm working in a couple of albums that are going to be out. I suppose that the first one is going to be out about April. It's a live performance. Okay. I do prefer live performance. Yeah, that's your favorite. That's not like. That's your favorite. That this is the thing and that's <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No tricks. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No auto-tune. Yeah, no auto-tune, no processing. Yeah, no processing, no, nothing. Oh, multiple track vocals and multiple yeah, yeah. track drums to make it sound. Yeah. Well, this uh, live album is going to be out about April. That's our plan. We were talking about that yesterday, me and my wife. My wife is my support, is my everything. Yeah. And, and she's been with me. In fact, she was the one that brought all of the old guys to studio for the Buenos really? Aires Club, yeah. which is not in the film of the white guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, uh, this album is going to be out about April, and then I, I have to go to a studio because, uh, you know, the industry works this way. They want a studio album. Right. It doesn't matter that the live one is going to be better. That, I'm yeah. absolutely sure that's going to be yeah. better. But they and, want and, a, and for the brand of Buena Vista Social Club and Juan DeMarco, people, that live vibe is a part of the brand. And the roomy sound. Right. The roomy right. sound. Yeah. That's what I love of this uh, project. So the studio album is going to be out, I hope, about August, September. That's what my plan. And in all terms, I've been working with my students at the Mason Wisconsin University. Yeah. They, they made a, a couple of good tracks that, that I love. Yeah. There's a one uh, kind of Santana thing that I, uh, or Willie Chirino thing that I made <laughs> with one of them. And there's a uh, hip hop as well. Yeah. They all love hip hop. Of this course. is the culture of the young guys. Well, you know, hip hop is uh, based on the African drum, so it's all connected. It's all connected. There's a link between the, the hip hop in, and the, the Afro Cuban music. There's of a course. link, definitely. Of course. Definitely. You have another groove. Mm -hmm. and for That's the, the boom back. But it's African thing. It's an African thing. It's the expression of the people of the marginal neighborhoods expressing their thinking. The difference is that we sing and we improvise. Our freestyle is singing. So you have to create at the same time the melodic line and the, the, the lyrics. Meanwhile, the freestyle for hip hop is just poetry. Yeah. Hip hop is poetry over a groove. I love hip hop. Yeah. I like it. Um, you know, a lot of people, the, the, you know, the relationship between Jamaican dance hall culture, reggae culture, and hip hop, beginning. and the relationship between that African drum and Cuba and the Caribbean in general and black people in America. You know, it's all connected, and I, you know, it's it's fortunate that, you know, I'm I'm, I get to hear the stories my dad told me, and then we get to I get to sit down with someone of your status and and you know history and and get the words from you, and and we get to kind of watch, the world get connected again through music, courtesy of, and one of the blessings of the internet and streaming is the oh, ability yeah, for, sure. for people to communicate and share music and share ideas via. Via these phones, so yeah, yeah, this is, this is great. In fact, the phones are killing the young guys. I think <laughs> I'm an old guy, remember. So, uh, but it's very good that they are everybody's able to share. Well, it's ideas a, it's a and gift it. and a curse. Yeah, right. There's there's some things people go too far with this. Yeah, too they far, go too, too far, far and they depend on it too much. But it does have some it does have some highlights. I, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. I'm I'm very happy that. That the people is working, the people is creative. Yeah. We are Africans. We are only one tribe. This is the way I think. It doesn't matter where you are born. Yeah. It doesn't matter at all. And the fact that we, the African uh, descendants, 
are creating music and are doing things with our own culture and uh, spreading the news mm. uh, to the world is absolutely great, incredible. Yeah. Um, before I let you go, you know, we uh, here in America deal with a lot of race relations and race issues. And, you know, people that aren't familiar with Cuba, Cuba has all races, all complexions, all that. Um, what are race relations like between darker skinned Cubans and white Cubans? Is there, are there race problems in yes, Cuba? Yes, there, there are. Of course there are. But it's not the same as in America. Okay. You know, if, because basically, I'll tell you something. Basically, the people that came to our country are, came from Spain. Right. Spain is a multi-tribal country. And uh, in fact, some people don't like that I said that, but Spain is Northern Africa. Spain is not Europe yeah. at all. So they were in touch with the African people f the Moors, for the centuries. Moors in the Northern so Africa. when they came and they mixed with the Africans, uh, it's a different, they created a different kind of society. Of course, we had uh, racism, a lot of racism during the first half of the 20th uh, century in our country. Right now, it's not a big issue, but there are but it's race problems. If you are dark skinned, it's not likely that you can get a very good position related to where the money is. Mm. Which is still problem. here in America, too. It's the same, but in America, you have more violence and more of this kind of stuff. And uh, I've seen some, for some, uh, you know, I was born in Cuba. I do speak Spanish. That's my language. And uh, for some people, for some African-Americans, I'm not a black guy. This is unbelievable. I'm not a black guy. No, you're Hispanic, you're Cuban, you are not black. Not nah, And I tell you something, hmm. I'm very proud because I'm Cuban. And I think that the most African country here in America is Cuba. Yeah. We preserve the religion, we preserve the culture, we play the drums in the same way as, I don't know, four centuries or five centuries ago. People that know. Mm -hmm. People that know. Yeah. Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Jamaicans, Trini, Bayesian, Guyanese, some Colombians, right? And yes, there are white Colombians, there are white Puerto Ricans, there are white Dominicans. Yeah. But those are black people. People that know. We are they may say you're not black America, you don't have the same experience. You didn't live through Jim Crow. You didn't live through segregation, et cetera, et cetera. But as a part of the African diaspora, and as part of the connection to the continent and the connection to who the essence of who we are and melanin, et cetera, and that connection of the drum and spirituality, people that know, know. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And uh, I mean, there's people who tell me I'm not black. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, because you're mixed. Yeah. So I'm not black. But you feel black. Yeah. You are an African American and a little bit Jewish. Yeah. And your name is Ibrahim. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> His name and is. I like it. I love that name. <laughs> Thank you, very Well, your partner, your partner, the Buena Vista Soy, Ibrahim Ferrer. Ibrahim Ferrer. Ferrer. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. He wasn't Jewish. He was absolutely a Congo man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but uh, his name was Ibrahim. Yeah. He was the most, the sweeter person I have known in my life and one of the greatest singers I have worked with. For me, it was a, like a, a dream, a realized dream when I was on stage conducting. All of these old guys. I was only 38, 39 years old. And I said, well, I'm in front. I'm the band leader, and I'm conducting all of these stars. It was a dream. And uh, we were so happy. Then came the people trying to make more money. I yeah. didn't like it, and I quit. Yeah. I don't mind. I, I don't have You want to do it for the culture. You no want... ties to anyone. Right. I, I'm free. Right. Um, another one of your partners, Anga Diaz. I'm, I'm very uh, close with his daughters, Ibei. Uh, uh, the uh, twins, yeah. You are broadcasting the music of Ibei. I do have a picture of day two at the Bottle Clown. Do you remember there was a, uh, a terrorism, uh, terrorist attack at the Bottle Clown? This is downtown Paris, mm. near to uh, Pigalle. Yeah. Well, I do have a picture. With day two, they were only two years old, and Gadi is playing with my band on stage, and they have day two. Holding the twins. Holding the twins. They were only two years old. And yeah. for me... You know, I love them. And, uh, well, Anga me, used to bring the girls out on stage when they was two years old. 
They would oh, come yeah, out and yeah, perform. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And God, in my opinion, God was the, the greatest percussion player of the last 40 years after the old guys, Candido and Guavella uh, and uh, uh, Tata Wines. But he was the, the, the most important percussionist of the new generation. Mm. He should be right now 56, 57 years old. He's of my generation. And uh, he was working with me for years. And they w used to go to my rehearsals when we were in parties. And I have the picture with they two holding the trains, <laughs> Ibeya, yeah. and right now they are stars. They're stars, traveling they the world. Stars. They they, they, they go back and forth between Paris and Cuba. They say they spend, they go to Cuba sometimes. You know, Ibeya is a word. It's an, a Yoruba word. word. Yeah. Twins. Twins, yeah. Twins. Ibeya, they are the saints yeah. that we call in Regla de Ocha, Santeria, which is our thing, yeah. that we call eBay, couple of twins, that you have to put a couple of, uh, como se dice muñecas, se me olvidó? Dolls. Dolls, dolls couple yeah. of dolls, and uh, you know, and uh, I do have my twins. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has. Juan DeMarco's Buena Vista Social Club, but he's got his own thing moving. We're going to be looking for this music soon, and it is my pleasure to have this conversation with you today Thank you. and get some insight to what's going on in Cuba, and, and hopefully as uh, communication and more people get to travel back and forth, uh, I think everyone hopes that the preservation of, of culture in Cuba and, and, you know, everyone hopes that big corporation doesn't, you know, ruin things down there. Uh, thank you very much for giving me a chance to be in contact with your audience. And if you go to Cuba, just give me a ring. Yeah. I want to introduce you to Asata Shakur. <laughs> I would love to meet her. Yeah. I would love it. We'll, we'll stop right there. No, no Asada Shakur talk today because you, know, you know they're still trying to extradite her back. You know Donald yeah, I Trump. Know, I know. Donald Trump, and they're still trying to say, look, we want her back. No, I don't think that the government is going to allow that. No. Well, it should be a, a crime. Yeah. It should be a crime. I don't know if she's guilty or not, but she's an old lady. And everything happened, already happened, and she was fighting for their, her well, beliefs. Listen, well, listen, if what we've seen recently with the treat, if, if, if the way police treat people in America today. Yeah, I've seen it. If we go back to the 60s, imagine how they were treating black and brown people then when there were no cameras. Unbelievable. Um, and, you know, I am not one who is co-signing killing anyone. But, you know, I have been aware of instances where people feel like they've had to fight for their life. And, you know, my father, you know, uh, Afini Shakur, uh, Asada Shakur, uh, and a lot of other people who were fighting for black and brown people to be, to just have civil rights. Just to be civil. We were black people weren't even asking for equal back then. We just, just civil rights. Just civil. Your basic rights. Think about that. Yeah. Today we talk about equal. Then yeah. it was civil. Just civil. just respect me. Yeah. Just treat me like a human. I'm a please. person. I'm, I'm a, a human person. Man. I'm a person. Yes. If you put all of that in context with the Asada Shakur incident and what was going on at that time. And that was right here in Jersey. Um, hopefully that, you know, hopefully that doesn't happen. No, uh, it won't. It won't. Definitely it won't. No, no. Can't happen. 